Excellent. So we are now recording. And as many people as we do have on here today, there I won't always be able. Carl, I can't hear you. Let me see. I just saw your question. Uh, let me see if you need to be un. Yeah, let me click to unmute you. So okay, Carl, I can I can hear you now. Yeah. Yeah, and mostly I'm going to end up having people muted because that way, in case people have background noise. But I'll try to watch and see if people raise their hands. Um, did you have a general question you wanted to ask first? No, no. Okay. Uh, are you supposed to be able to see me? Can you see me? Say again? Can you see me, my image? I can, I can see your hand raised. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right. I'll be quiet now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. What I'm going to do is, even though we've still got about five minutes until we start, I thought I would just I put together a few slides for people to see about why all of this is even important. And you can see here, and some of you have the postcard uh, that I created with, with this kind of information. I always think it's interesting to see so how much, how much is your time worth? And it's worth a lot. If you start thinking about people that you work with, then good grief. Um, if somebody is disorganized, it starts costing your company or your university or your nonprofit pretty significant amount of money. At this point, I'm just going to click through on a few statistics. I'll leave them up there for a few moments. Um, any of you who are just now joining in, don't worry, we haven't started the main part of the webinar. I'm going to start uh, right at the top of the hour. Uh, we still have people coming on. We've got about 25 now. We definitely have a full house. So these statistics will just be up here and they'll be in the recording as people need them. I'm going to check and see if we've got any other people that have a hand raised or had a question maybe here at the beginning before we get going. And so, okay, just looking to see if anybody else does. I'm not going to really make much commentary about these different financial facts. I gathered these from quite a few different resources. And, you know, I'm not saying these are absolute, but I, I think... Uh, any different research you would look at. We have a lot of people spending a lot of money trying to keep up with their paper, find it again, recreate it. I mean, it just goes on and on. Never fear, those of you who are just now getting on here, this is just kind of early bonus facts in case anybody needed additional reasons for, ah, I can't do this anymore. It's too crazy. Too crazy trying to keep up. Any of you who are managers can probably identify with this particular statistic. Great, we have more folks coming on. These are just early, early facts. And we'll be starting in about, oh, two minutes. Two minutes and we'll get going. I will try to watch for people who are asking questions. Um, the good thing is that everything does go into a chat which I can later on, it's not a live chat, but it's a, a chat that I can access later to see if there were some questions maybe that did not get answered, and then I'll do what I can to try to answer those questions. Just a few more statistics for you. And the whole notion of um, offices going paperless, they just aren't yet. They may soon there's been a discussion about having paperless offices for quite a long time. And, yeah, and thank you. Somebody <laughs> made a comment about if 90% of office activity is record keeping, we are not doing our great work. And those of you who know um, Michael, and I'm going to not say his name correctly, uh, Stan Gay, Stan your Bungay, or I'm, I'm not saying it exactly right, 
but that would be, those would be, a, he's got two books, both about doing great work. Oh, thank you. Yes, Michael Bungay's, and it looks like Stanier, but I always think it must be Stanier. I have no idea if it really is or not. Okay, well, here we go. I think we're just about ready to start. I have just a few seconds until the top of the hour, and we continue to have folks logging in. I'm going to go ahead and greet everybody. While I'm greeting you, I'm going to have some photos that are displayed of different people's offices. Many of you know, well, let me do an introduction first. My name is Megan McIntosh. I was a classroom teacher for many years. I was a professor for 10 years, and I was the director of the Excellence in Teaching program at the University of Nevada for five years and helped professors uh, be even more effective in their teaching and the way that they were um, helping the students in the classes, both undergraduates and graduates, learn. For the last seven years, um, almost eight years, I have worked for myself. A lot of what I teach is productivity, and I define productivity quite broadly. It's the whole way of how in the world can we be able to have our emphasis on excellence, which is why the name of my company is what it is. You know, do people need time management? Do they need stuff management, which is what today's focus is about? Do they need to be able to get their writing done? Do they need to know how to communicate better? I mean, there are all kinds of things that we need in order to be more productive. I travel all around um, the country and certainly around our state of Nevada and work with all kinds of folks. Sometimes when I go places and I'm going to be talking about offices and how they're organized, I'll encourage people to send me pictures ahead of time. It's fascinating. And that's where a lot of these pictures came from. These are all before pictures. And I don't, in, in this particular workshop or uh, teleworkshop, I'm not uh, showing any after pictures. But I have a bunch of those where people either took the ideas in the workshop or they read some materials or they just kind of got with it and decided, okay, I can't, I can't live like this anymore. And that's really uh, part of my backstory. I had never been taught how to be organized. My parents tried to help me be organized. They tried to tell me I needed to be organized, but it didn't particularly take. So it wasn't until I was a faculty member and I did finally decide I can't live like this anymore and just started seeking out a lot of different alternatives. What you may have seen on the web page when you registered was how I even got connected with Paper Tiger. And just as I continue to go through uh, some of these pictures where all you can imagine, you know, are the people being able to be as productive as they like? Some of my favorites are the under the desk pictures. And so imagine that my webcam has come into your office and sort of scoped around or come into your home. And you're welcome to send me pictures if you like. They could be part of a future slideshow. But anyway, um, my office manager who handled many, many things besides just the office. She left, she came to work one day, worked and everything, and then left and did not come back for three months. She was out on emergency medical leave. Now, we were very sorry about that. We were sorry that she had the trouble, that she had to be out for three months, of course. And it was really difficult while she was gone, not just because we didn't have her good humor and all the other kinds of things that we appreciated about her, but we couldn't find anything. And we had probably five, I think we had five legal size file cabinets. She knew where things were. We didn't. And it was the pits. So my graduate assistants and I would open up file drawers. We would try to find things. Some stuff was sort of color coded. Some stuff was by categories, some things just were in places where she knew where they were, and it was horrendous because we couldn't find what we needed. When she came back, I said, Karen, before you do anything else, you have got to find us a solution. I knew there were all kinds of different filing systems, and what I wanted was her to do the research and find out what it was that 
that we could use so that whether she was there, whether she was not there, whether anything else happened, she would be able or any of us would be able to find things. And that's how she came upon Paper Tiger. We ordered it, got the free version. Oh, this is one of my favorite pictures. This is the, um, as one of my good friends calls it, the food and makeup drawer. And almost everybody in his or her office has a drawer that has snacks in it and lotions or eye drops or all kinds of floss. I like that. <laughs> you don't want to be going to class with things hanging out of your mouth. So we started with Paper Tiger 1. I think it was 1.0 at that time. And this was probably 13, I'd say about 13 years ago. At that time, of course, there was not an online version. That was, I mean, nobody had ever even imagined the cloud. One of the reasons I show this particular one is because of um, the pickup sticks. And you're going to see, I have a whole bunch of pickup sticks. This is somebody else's office and uh, later on. All right, let me just check and see before I begin to talk to you very specifically about Paper Tiger. I just wanted to tell you how I even got into it. And I will certainly tell you that never, ever again have I not used Paper Tiger. That's not a great sentence. But once I started to use it and began to realize that I could find whatever I wanted fast, anything physical, and today we're only talking about the physical Paper Tiger. There is a new beta um, version coming out of a digital Paper Tiger. Um, we're not even going to delve into that at all today. I just want to talk to you about how do you keep up with your physical items, your paper, your books, your notebooks. You may have DVDs that you use in your classes. You may have materials that you use for workshops. You've got all kinds of files. You've got personal items. You have items that are, are for your work. All of these can be organized using Paper Tiger. And in, in our short time together, I'm going to try to give you as much information as possible. I'm going to do a quick scroll through our folks, see if there's anybody who has his or her hand raised. And that is a way of signaling me that you do have a question. Um, you were invited to send in a question ahead of time. Many people did, so I've been able to incorporate those. A few questions I'll even read out loud, but mostly I've just tried to incorporate everything that people have asked about. Since I don't have another moderator with this webinar, I'm the one teaching the class and looking for questions, so I'm not going to look at, at the questions every single moment um, as they come up. But let me find out right now if there was anybody that had a general question about anything that I just showed. And one <laughs> One person wrote in and said, oh, all those offices look so clean. And so I, I can only imagine that we might need to, you know, take a few more uh, photos of, of some of the folks in the class. Somebody is asking whether or not there are any handouts or slides that you can print. And I didn't, I didn't set it up that way. Uh, today's really just a, a demonstration, and there's not really any handouts that anybody needs. When somebody is saying they can't sign in, I'm not positive what that means because you're, you're emailing me or, I mean, you're sending me a message through GoToWebinar, which would indicate that you're in. So I'm not, sorry, I can't answer that question because I'm not exactly sure um, what it is that you're, what you're asking. So any other, any other questions at this time? And you just put them in the little chat window and I'll try to take, take a look at them. All right, what I'm going to do is I'll let you know up front, and many of you have already gone to the site and, and taken a look, there is both a cloud-based version of Paper Tiger, which I switched to a while back, and, oh, I see, somebody is, is clarifying. People are seeing the sign into Paper Tiger screen, and they think that's what's making them, they think they're supposed to be signing in. Yeah, sorry. Good. This is why having a class helps. What I'm showing you is this is where I go to sign in. And right now these are screenshots. In a few minutes we will be using the actual um, 
real version, and I may change my uh, screen resolution to make it even clearer, but I think for right now you can see these. So these are just screenshots. So you sign in, and then we go to whoever the person's database is. You can see that my database is my initials and database. I didn't call it anything particularly clever. When I sign in, these are the locations that I see. Let me say something about locations. Locations is the language that the software developers use where you're dividing things up into the places. And this is why locations make sense. You do not have to label your locations as a place, however. You can think about these, and I hate to say category because you're going to see the word category again. Um, you can think about them as a grouping or in some way that these particular items go together. The ones that I'm showing you here, these are my real ones. So this is a screenshot right off of my um, computer. I have a location that's called action. Well, I think you can imagine what that is. Those are the items that, they're, they're hot items right now. I can actually go to them. Question just came in about whether these are actual physical locations. They are. As far as I have designated where these items live. The good thing is I can change that. Um, there are groups I've worked with. For example, one time I was working with a very large grant funded agency. They had about 90 people that worked there, um, all federally funded grants. They, they adopted the Paper Tiger network version so that everybody would be able to find what they needed. And they moved offices, which meant that the physical place of where they had been storing things changed because they moved offices. But it didn't matter because they could go into Paper Tiger and just relabel. If they wanted to even have it have a new location name, they could do that. Or if they just needed to indicate, here's where this location is physically located. Now with mine that you're seeing, and let me make my little, I can get a little pointer here. Hang on. Let me get my spotlight. All right, my action items, I know where those are. They're right next to my desk. Archive happens to be located in my garage, and I'm going to show you a few pictures of that in a few minutes. Baskets is an interesting location, if you will. I, I love Longer Burger Baskets. I have bought many Longer Burger Baskets over the year, none, none lately, uh, because I certainly have plenty. They're pretty big baskets. And I realized, okay, this is ridiculous, is I've got all these baskets and they're just sitting around. What if I put things in them and stored things in them? But of course you can't see into a basket. So if I have, and I didn't take any pictures of these, but at the tops of all my shelves, I have these big giant baskets. And they all have names because that's how the company names them. But I can say, and you'll see this in a few minutes, I can say what's in there. And it, the, so the location, I know it's all my Longer Burger baskets, but then the way that I've written it up, it says where that particular basket is. It's in the, the family room top left, or it's in the office, the shelf right next to the door. And so I can tell which, which basket it is. Hard drive CDs, that's just when, I mean, good grief, we all know our hard drives get huge, and even though you can get terabytes of space, at some point you decide, I don't even want to be backing all this stuff up. So many of the things, for example, a lot of the things that I did at the university, some of them I've downloaded onto CDs, and all those CDs are numbered so that I can go back and find things. Ideas is, eh, that's, I'm, I'm actually not using that one very much. I have mostly a place where I keep those. Projects, that's a big one. Those are also active projects. Reference is my largest. Um, I think at this point there are maybe 150, 160 different items, and it's physical files. Um, and I'll show you some pictures of those. Safe deposit box is exactly what it says. 
And so if I ever think, hey, where's my will? Well, then I would be able in Paper Tiger to type in the word will, and it would say, oh, your will is at your safe deposit box, as well as some other kinds of things. Maybe some of you could see how this could be helpful if not only you left your job, but you could also see how this could be helpful in your personal life. I use it for both, both personal and professional. The last two here are both physical locations, storage unit, and I do have a storage unit, which you will get to see pictures of, and I must say, people comment on it all the time. When they're driving by my storage unit, they say, wow, that's really organized, and I think, and I could help you be really organized, but you have to use Paper Tiger. Then storage unit books, it just still in my storage unit, but I, I have the books stored um, in a different numbering system. And listen to that, please, if you're not already using Paper Tiger. Numbering system is what's key. And let me see if there's anybody that has a question that's come in. I don't think so, not yet. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. This just shows you um, when you open Paper Tiger, there is a search tab and you would type in whatever word you wanted to search for. This is one of the big concepts. Regular filing systems, and I don't care if you use categories, I don't care if you use alphabetical order, that those are fine if you've got about 15 files. You can find things, and if you've only got about 15 files, then if you couldn't remember what you called it, you could dig around in all 15 of your files, and it just wouldn't take that long. But once you start having 40 files, or 80 files, or 9,000 files, or X number of storage boxes, or hard drive backup CDs, anything, once you start getting into significant numbers, good grief, use Paper Tiger because it's, it's based on a keyword system in the same way that none of us try to remember anymore the name of a web page particularly. We know we can find it again because we type in certain words and it'll, it'll go back to it. So if you think, where, I wonder where that teleseminar is that Megan talked about. Well, you could type in the teleseminar name or the content and my name, and it's going to come up. It's going to take you to that particular page. You don't have to have remembered it. All right, so you do the search, and I'll demonstrate that in a few minutes. One of the other tabs uh, that you can click on is called Reports, which is important. Um, you can, once a month, I print out a physical list of my Paper Tiger items, and I can show you that later if if we have time. But just know that you can always print a physical list. Many people do this not only as a backup, um, but mostly they do it because, you know, what if their computer's not even on? Or what if they are traveling and they, they want to be able to access particular things without calling back to the office? I always print out a physical one when I am going to go work in my storage unit because I don't take my laptop over there and I just need to be able to find a few things, or if I'm reorganizing it, um, like I'm doing now, where I'm downsizing, then, then I want to be able to make note of any changes that I've made, any, anything I've tossed or given away, and then when I get back to the office, I can easily change that. All right, let's go to the next thing. You also are able to print out tabs very easily um, when I'm working in people's offices. We just figure out what, what are the names of the locations that they have? You know, do they have one location? Do they have three locations? And then we can print out tabs for them um, that would go at the top of the, of the hanging file folder. Um, and I'm, I'm a big fan of hanging file folders. Or you can print out labels. You can print out whatever the heck you want. And I'll show you just some different options on this. This shows, this is a screenshot of the different tabs that you have um, also showing. So you can click on locations, you can click on categories, confirm, I'll explain what that is because we did have some people that talked about so what happens when you move things. Reminders, which I'll 
I'll mention to you and how you might use them. I don't tend to use reminders, but I have a lot of um, clients who do. And then trash, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's the trash, things that you're getting rid of. Okay, well, let me see. All right, let's go to the next slide. It's not me stopping now. Oh, I just hate it when it does that. Okay, do we have any questions? Any questions that anybody wants to ask at this point? And I'm not seeing any more questions coming in just yet. Let me scroll through and see if anybody has his or her hands raised. Okay, and I'm pretty sure, Melinda, I think you got your hand or your question answered a few minutes ago. Okay, this, this shows the capacity, and this is still from my actual paper tiger. And you can set your capacity on whatever you want so that if, if you do have 875 files, well, then you just set your capacity for 1,000. And you can always change it. It's not a fixed item. So when you decide, well, I'm going to start with 200, and then you exceed that, you just change it. And a lot of times people think, oh my gosh, well, I don't, I don't know what number to pick. Just pick a number. And then when it's full, you go on. So that you can see that with mine, on some of these, an action is an, is an example. I put down 120. And well, there's only three things in there because mostly I found other ways that serve me better. Um, I can't remember now what bas. I think the second one is baskets and there are 18 baskets that are filled with, uh, I think this 200 right here is the reference, and I have 131 that are actually filled. And you heard me earlier say that I think I have 150 or 160 files. I'll show you a little bit of how that works. Um, one of the great things about Paper Tiger is you can take out your Let's say you get rid of a file, or you move a file, or you just decide we're, we're finished with this right now, then, and it was in number 62. Well, then you, you take it out, you take it out of your system, you shred it, you recycle the paper, you do whatever you're going to do, and it now opens that file up. The next time you go into Paper Tiger to create a new file, you click New, and it takes you to the first open place. So you don't have to keep adding things at the end. You go back and you're, you're infilling, um, if you will. These are, this is so that you could see some of the key words. This also isn't fixed. In my projects folder, and this is where if, if the webcam, if I could just actually turn my webcam over to my left, we could look right into my projects. Um, I have a lateral hang file cabinet uh, that's a low one, it's the same height as my desk, and when you open it up, my projects are in there. Project number one, I just call it Upcoming Teleseminars and Projects. And you can see these are some of the different teleseminars that I'm working on, that there's something that hasn't quite finished up yet, and I've just got a folder about it. Um, these, these are always pictures into my, into my real life. So that Linda Nielsen, who did The Mind Has a Mind of Its Own, which many of you were on that, I haven't quite finished that up, even though the class was this week. Um, there are a couple things that need to happen yet. And then I, uh, most of these other ones are upcoming. Let me check and see. I've got a question raised or hand raised. Um, Lorna, I saw you had a question, but then you, you put your hand down, so maybe I just, I just answered what it was. Tax issues, these are just, you know, any of you that own a business know that there's just stuff um, that comes up, and I want to keep that handy. Staying positive in a freaked out world, some of you are a member of that. And I've just got all kinds of different things I'm working on, and I want them handy right there. All right, so again, going back to, so you see what my locations are. Now let's go ahead and look at how this is set up. And I want to, you know, keep explaining how this works. Please send in questions um, as you think of them, and I'll try to, to keep an eye on it. This is my file room. So I have a, a great office. It's a nice big office. And then I have a file room that's just right off my office. And it has 
files in it. Kind of why it's named the file room. It also has my Pitney Bowes machine. It has, I don't know, extra supplies, all kinds of things. And I did not clean it up for you. So you can see I have stuff sitting on top of the file cabinet. I was taking these pictures a couple of days ago. I thought, oh, I should make this look better. And I thought, you know, this is all about real. Here's a picture right into the physical file. So I opened up a drawer, and you can see the numbering system. Those three file cabinets that you just saw, that's my, that's my main place that I file reference materials. Articles that I've copied that I want to go back to. Original handouts from uh, workshops so that I can go back to those. Notes from particular meetings that for some reason, uh, you know, I think I'm going to be working with this person again. I want to keep that. Envelopes that, that I've cut up things that I have people do in workshops, those are in there. Documentation from insurance. I mean, it's everything is, is in these particular files. And we did have a question that came in about Twister. And so, yes, I do have a Twister game, not to play Twister, but because I read a metaphor one time that um, life is like a game of Twister. And so I use that as a demonstration, and I've just never put it away. I, I don't even want to tell you how long ago that workshop was and how long that Twister game has been sitting up there. Um, but now that you all have called my attention to it, I'll probably have to do something about it. So these are tabs that I just printed off using the the Paper Tiger software, and I could tell that I wanted it to print from 1 to, I don't remember if I did 180 the first time or how many I did, slipped them in the top of those plastic tabs, snapped them on my hanging file folders, and I will tell you I use Pendaflex because, not because they're the most expensive, but because they last. They don't tear up and rip up, and I've bought a lot of other companies um, I've gone all the way from the cheapest ones, which will go unnamed, to some of the other ones that are still pretty expensive, and I like Pendaflex the best, but you buy, buy whatever you want. And the colors don't mean anything, because sometimes people say, well, those are all pretty, you know, does red mean one thing and blue means another? No, it doesn't mean anything. It's just I, I changed the color, or rotated the colors kind of through there, just so it looked more interesting. I've I've got the plain old the green ones that I've used before, and those are cheaper, and they're fine, but I figure if I'm looking in my files, I'd rather see bright color. All right, question came in about um, two different questions. So the reference numbers are not related to date. They are not related to alphabetical order, and they are not related to topic. And I'll show you how my, my system is set up. I wanted you to kind of get a visual of what it's going to look like in your drawer. So for all of you that think, ah, what, what's in number 24? Um, does it go with number 25? And, and is it kind of the same as number 26? Ooh, breath, breath. I was the same way. I thought, well, I don't know about this. And here's how I became convinced. It's the first day I typed in something that I wanted when I was still the director of the Excellence in Teaching program. I typed in a word, and it told me what number it was in. I went there, and it was there. And I thought, awesome. Probably at that time I didn't think awesome. I don't know if the word was starting to be used that way. It makes me happy every day. Um, Janet Baker from Paper Tiger was interviewing me <laughs> for a podcast, and I told her this. I said, this is 13 years later, and as many times as I've used Paper Tiger, every time I type something in, it tells me where it is, and I go there, and it's there. It still makes me happy. Another question is, do I keep um, personal and business-related files together? In my case, I do, because my business is located in my house. So I do have some personal things in here, things related to my family, um, for example, both my parents who are now deceased. and so just some information about them. For those of you that would be, for example, using Paper Tiger at work, then that would be one, one database. And then you could have Paper Tiger, a separate Paper Tiger database for at home. And that's sort of a 
simple way to say it, um, because in some cases your your company or your nonprofit or your university would be buying the database for you to work um, to use at work, and you would you would want a separate one for yourself. All right, so I hope that answers that. Let's look at a few more. Um, I just put numbers, and you can see this is nothing fancy. It's just my messy handwriting with big numbers on the front. And this changes. Um, there was a time when I printed them all out with really fancy lettering of which, which numbers were in which files. But it changes, because let's say all of a sudden there's a project that just gets huge, and it ends up taking up about four inches. Well, I don't want my file cabinets jammed so darn tight that I can't even move anything. So then I'll just take, you know, a few of the files that were at the back, you know, maybe number 76 through 78, and I move them down to the lower drawer. So I'm, I'm always, I'd say a few times a year I end up changing the front of these because I've moved enough files around. Generally, at least once a year, I do a complete uh, cleanse of my files where I go through every single folder and decide, am I keeping this? Am I dumping this? Um, am I keeping part of it, getting rid of the rest of it? And then I put things into the recycling. I put things into the shredder. Um, if the paper was only used on one side, I'll often, and it's you know not sensitive, I'll stick it into my printer so that I can use the back of it. And then that, shoot, always, that reduces my files quite a bit. For those of you, and we did have a question that comes in, that, that had come in um, ahead of time, about, you know, what in the world do you do if you have not touched your files, for example, for, say, six years? Then part of what you need to do is, is a complete cleanse. You do not try to do it all on one day. You just go through a few files every single day so that it doesn't overwhelm you so that you can just think about, now, do I even need to keep this? Um, is, is there any value in this? A really great way, if you've been using some other system, and obviously it can't be a very great system if you haven't been in your files for six years, because, and that's true for many people. Um, that's why they have whole file cabinets that have been un, unaccessible for a long time, because no one knew what was in there. And so if you are converting to Paper Tiger, then you can, as you're putting it in, you decide, am I going to put this one in, am I not going to put this one in? And that's a way of, as you process it, it gets in there, you work from the front to the back, you don't worry about changing the order, you deal with it as it's there. The question came in, does Paper Tiger show the date of when you accessed it last? It doesn't do that automatically. At least I've never discovered that it does that. However, here's, here's something that it will do. And let me, let me go ahead and get out of my slides and show you. This is my real database. So we're now looking live on this. Let me click into references. And waiting for that to convert. I know it takes a minute to show up on your screen. There is a column, let me give myself a pointer, there's a column right here, Kathy, um, that is called action date. One possibility is you could put in a date that you accessed a file, because my guess is that uh, part of the reason you're asking that is it would be a way later that you could sort to say, all right, anything I have not you know, that I accessed in 2007, and that's the date that's showing, then I'm getting rid of it. So you could use the action date there. You, you also could put a date if you wanted to in status. I mean, here's the thing. When you search in the, in the uh, Paper Tiger, it searches all of the columns. So I'll just show you, for example, I'm just going to type in 2007, which that's not going to narrow it down much. But I'm going to click 2007, I just put it in the search, and you can see there, as it comes up on your screen, these are all the files that I have that somewhere in them it says 2007. So I happen to have four in my archive, I've got two in the hard drive CD, 
and apparently I have eight in reference. So this would be a way that you could you could put a date in there and then you could sort on it in that particular um, column if you wanted to. So I hope that that, um, Kathy, does that answer that? Any other questions that people want to ask? Well, let's go ahead and go back to this little few slides here, a few more. Here, here's where a, a screenshot of, in my reference, file one, two, three. All right, number one, and all I'm, I'm going to do, because I, I know this comes across as small, and do dolphins yawn. I'm not going to even talk to you about what that is. It's just this project that keeps sitting in the background. Yes, it is the very first thing in in my reference file, not because it is the most important, but when I put it in, number one happened to be empty because I had taken what had been in number one out. Number two is I have a, a Dell laptop computer and a Dell desktop so that all of the things that are related to both of those computers are in file number two. File number two is a pretty fat file. And then number three is computer. And I know you think, well, now how is this different? It's because I just, um, I don't even want to explain how my brain works. But these two are in different, um, they're right, they happen to be right next to each other, not because they need to be and because they're related, but that's what was open. Now what I have specifically is in number two, this is mostly where I get into the software part of it and not so much the documentation, but mostly it's the software. So if I typed in hmm, QuickBooks, which is what I use, where's the, where's the documentation for that software? I could type in QuickBooks and it would pull up um, number three. Here you can see this happens to be my file 104 through, I guess, 113 that you can see. I'm using hanging file folders that have a box bottom in a couple of cases because there is so much in there. It wasn't just a thin file, and I wanted you to see how, how you can do that. So you're, this probably was stuff that I took out of a notebook. Um, these are envelopes that I use in a workshop. Um, here was a bunch of documentation related to um, workshops I used to do on block scheduling. And I have that there, you know, just in case. Um, and so that's that. Hang on, I'm trying to get to the, I don't know why it keeps doing that. Okay. So here I'm just zooming in a little bit more with this particular screenshot. Also, I just got new screenshot software, so I've, you know, been testing that out. This just shows you reference two, three is a little bit, a uh, little bit hard to read there just because of the glare. I'm not exactly a pro photographer, <laughs> and, and I've got some of the files that are within there labeled, but it doesn't matter. Um, I can find whatever is in there. I'm really zooming in on this one. This is the I have one file that is for other people I've hosted for teleseminars. And you can see I've been hosting people since um, 2007, and lots of people in 8, 9, 10, and 11. So that the most recent one that I had in here, I, I don't have um, Linda Nielsen's yet, because you know where it is. It's over here in projects number one. And, but it, it shows all the other ones. Many of you have been part of a bunch of these uh, teleseminars and webinars. So you recognize all those people's names. Then when you go to that file, here's the file. Now the reason that the names are on there are, I don't, the names are on there because I had put them on these files when I was working on that project and I was getting ready to host them. I don't tend to label files that are only going into Paper Tiger because I'm not worried about finding them because I can find them by the, by the number. Okay, so just a few other, these are just other shots so that you can kind of see how it looks. And you can find anything that's in here. When I was taking um, a lot of my coaching classes a few years ago, so I want to show you an example of a notebook. I took a lot of classes, and I took a lot 
um, there were a number, usually one to five or six pages of handouts that went with each class that I took. And it was impossible to keep up with these at the time. So I just labeled, um, I bought some of those tabs that are numbered 1 through 30, and then I labeled some that are 31 through 70, and so on and so forth. I three-hole punched everything, I put it in here, and then I could, let's say it was a class about um, championing. I could type in the word championing. Paper Tiger would tell me that it was in my coaching notebook number 89. And I would just go to this notebook, find 89, tab, and there it was right there. A question came in, wouldn't it help to have both the number and a short phrase of what was in the folder? And here's why I'm going to tell you no, is um, it isn't that it wouldn't be helpful. The problem is, if you know you've labeled a bunch of things, then there are times you go ahead and you open up your file cabinet and you just start looking around in there. You think, well, I think it's in this drawer. Um, it's, it was the Smith file. And so you just open up a drawer and you're looking for the word Smith and you think, no, it wasn't that drawer. And you look at another one. If there aren't any labels, then you just know you're going to type it into Paper Tiger. It's going to tell you it's in number 57. And you think, oh, 57. You go right there. You open it up, 57. You grab it right out of there. What I tell people when I'm working with them um, in their offices, either uh, physically or virtually, is if you've already got labels on your folders, leave them. Don't worry about it. Don't take off labels. Just snap the new numbers on your hanging file folder. And the, and the other labels can be there. A lot of people end up deciding that they don't like the other labels that were there and they take them off. But I, mostly this is about doing it in an expedient fashion. Um, not only getting things filed, but getting things um, retrieved. I wanted to show you my storage unit. So this is one of the locations. And I have a lot of boxes in my storage unit. And most of them are clear. Not all of them are. But, but when you start having a whole bunch of items like this, you don't want to be looking through everything. And here's another aspect. Um, when I first left the university, I was out of town, mostly working in the state of Nevada, about three weeks of every four. And it was insane, uh, driving all over the place or flying all over the place um, to get to Vegas. And there were times I would ask my husband, I would be able to look up Paper Tiger, and I could say, honey, would you please go to the storage unit and get uh, box 16, 19, and 37? Because maybe I wasn't going to be getting home until Saturday night. Sunday, I had to unload my car from that week's workshops, load up materials for the following week. And I really, on Saturday night, did not want to be going to the storage unit. And my husband would be nice enough to go. I would never have been able to tell him, go to the workshop and see if you can find um, the boxes that have to do with engagement strategies to use in the classroom. He wouldn't have known what to look for. Um, also, my assistant, I could. she had a key, so she could get in, and she could access Paper Tiger, so she could go, and, and I could say, you know what, I need, I'm going to a school, I need the colored pencils and the pickup sticks, and she could go find those and then bring them to me. So this is just, you know, continuing with that particular list from the storage unit, and then here's my storage unit. So you can see why when people drive by the storage unit, they, they look in because it doesn't look like most people's storage units. The thing that, and, and I know there's a bunch of people on this call who know me really well, I am not an anal retentive organized person. I told you that this, this all came out of desperation. As a faculty member, I was almost out of my mind with the clutter in my office. I started looking for some solutions, Director of the Excellence in Teaching Program. We couldn't find any of our files when our assistant was gone, and we implemented this. I can go to Mayhem in no time. So it's systems like this that 
to me are easy to use. I've used them with so many different people and they all kinds of different personality types. We can all make this work. So lest any of you think, oh, I bet Megan's dorm room when she was in college was all nice. Oh, I, I don't want to put you in touch with any of my roommates. And, you know, that's all I'm saying about that. But you can see here that this is just pretty nifty. The, you can see the numbers that are on here. And so there's 59, there's 47, there's 46. And then we'll go to next page, next slide, so you can see. All right, why are we doing this? Here we go, back again. You can see crayon, uh, crayons, um, some special blocks, got some buckets here. These happen to be, 49 happens to be pickup sticks. And when you go into, oh, if you, I had one more slide. So it's so easy to find all of this. And what I wanted to do was go to the, the actual paper tiger, and I'm going to type in um, sticks, because I, I told you I've got pickup sticks. And see, it wouldn't do any good for me to tell, you know, to ask my husband, say, look, honey, would you mind going to the store, storage unit and find the pickup sticks? He wouldn't even know what for sure he was looking for. And I could say, well, you know, it kind of looks like round on the end. No good. Um, it needs to be where I can say, go and go to box 49 and get the pickup sticks. Now, I typed in the word sticks. And if you can see there, it pulled up three items. And it's because I happen to have a box that has glue sticks in it. I have two boxes with glue sticks. So sticks brought up both of those boxes, but it's easy as pie for me to look at these three and realize, oh, um, I don't need number five and number 41. I need number 49. So you don't have to worry. And let's just say, since I used the word insurance earlier, type in the word insurance, and this is going to pull up two items in archive, my workers' comp liability insurance, which I have to carry um, as a small business owner, and then um, I had a big project with Reading First. They made me get all kinds of, oh my goodness, all kinds of insurance. So I have, I have those documents, those kinds of uh, proofs of insurance, and it's from several years ago, but, but I'm keeping that. Um, so I keep things for seven years because I am a corporation, and then after that, everything into the happy shredder. In my reference files, there are four, four files, the current workers' comp insurance, things related to my car, and things related to the university. For example, okay, so what's the purpose of keywords? Thanks, Connie. Keywords just give you more places to search on. Um, it, it's, it's where you add more specificity. With, um, let's see, how to explain this the best? A few different ways. Sometimes on some of the items I have, so let me see if I can think of something that I've only got one. Well, actually, let me go to locations. I'll click on, um, not projects, I mean, because that's all those things have keywords. Let me go to reference. And let me find one that has nothing but a title. Okay, I'm going to go to number 22. Uh, my friend Tara Gray, who does um, great workshops about uh, Publish, Don't Perish. She's at New Mexico State. Sometimes when I go to universities, I take her materials with me to share with someone. Because um, if they bring up the idea that their faculty are not being as productive in their writing as they like, then I'll say, well, now, have you ever brought Tara Gray in? And I can hand them her materials. So with number 22 there, if, and I'm not sure, you know, what resolution you all have on your um, screens, what you can see, but there's nothing in keywords. It's only under the, the title. Most of my other items, I do use um, keywords. Sometimes the way that a keyword gets pulled in is because I search on something and it doesn't pull up the file or the box. 
and I think, hmm, what else would I have called that? And then I look up on whatever the other thing, I think, oh, well, yeah, I could have labeled it this. I type that in. It's there. But then I immediately go into keywords, and I type in the first words or word that I searched on, because that might come to mind again. This is especially good when you have several people accessing files in an office, because all of us use different ways of thinking about things. Um, a question, let's see, can you show us how you input the contents when you are filing? Do you pick the file to put things in, or does it assign it? Yeah, I'll do that um, in just one second here. Let me, let me answer this other question. If you use it for books, can you pull up a list by topic or author of all books regardless of location? Yes, you can. Sorry. Um, you could do, I'm trying to think of one that maybe I have a lot. Uh, mm, let me see if Originals pulls up much. I don't usually, well, let's just say that, that this had pulled up a whole list of, you know, like 20 things. Then you can, you can print out a list and, and then you can have that. So with books or DVDs or anything like that, you could just put in a keyword that let you know that this was the, um, you know, that you might want to search on that and then you could print out your, your list. So if you had a course name, for example, books that you usually share with your courses or you put them on reserve or things like that, you could, you could pull that up. And I am still going to show you how to input things. And let me see what this other question is. Uh, the way, the way that I, I keep up with Paper Tiger is I use it every day. So I'm forever using it. And so when I pull something out, I like to make sure, let's say I've pulled a, a paper folder out of the hanging file folders. It's one of the reasons to, keep, to use hanging file folders. You don't ever take the hanging file folder out. You leave it in. And then, but if, let's say you've got a document that's inside there or a paper file, you take it out. Make sure that the numbers are already written on there. So if you took it out of 71, just keep a pencil right there, and I have a pencil in my file room. I make sure that the number's on there. I carry it away, work on it in my office, take it to a meeting, whatever in the heck I'm doing. When I come back and I'm finished with it, then I, all I have to do is look right on there, and it says 71. Or if I didn't have the number on there, I can just look it back up and it'll tell me, Megan, this goes in 71. Then let's see, the question about how to input things. I'm going to go to locations and I'm going to go to reference, since that is the one that I use the most often. I'm going to click on new, which is over here on the right. I'm going to click on new and it is going to tell me um, that number 61, and I'm pointing to my screen as if you can tell where I'm pointing, that number 61 is open. So let's just say I wanted to put something in there called um, Paper Tiger Webinar. And oh, this is fabulous. I'm so glad this is coming up. While I'm typing this in, because this goes with one of the questions that one of you sent, while I'm typing this in, Paper Tiger tells me that there's an item that has a similar name. And so it asks me, do you want to merge with this item? Those of you that know you have five different folders all about the exact same thing, but the reason you have five is because you can never find the one you want, this is going to clean up your files like crazy. Now, there are other times that you don't want to merge it. There's a reason um, that you're going to have two different folders or three or whatever it, it happens to be. But I love, I love that it tells you, hey, Megan, you've already got something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and put in Paper Tiger Webinar, um, and I'm just putting in class taught on, you know, 6-24-11. Well, put that in right. Okay. And I'm not putting it in a category because it doesn't matter. I'm not putting an action date because it doesn't matter. And then I click Add to Reference 61, and it just puts it right in there. Because 61 happens to be the very first uh, 
item that was open. Now I'm also going to show you how you can change it. So let's say I want to put some other stuff in there. Well, you just click on edit and then I could say, well, I've got um, chat log. Maybe I print out the chat log and I want to put that in there. Then you just save changes and, and it'll save it in there. There are also ways of merging files. I'm not going to demonstrate that now because um, the purpose of today was to show you how it works, um, not every single feature, because there are many, many features, all easy to use, I'm happy to say. It is not time consuming. Um, so a question just came in, gosh, is this time consuming? It's not. It's, it's cake. Um, when I very first input this, I uh, I didn't try to do it all in one day. I mean, for heaven's sakes, I was still a faculty member and I was just setting it up at home. I bought my own version for myself at home and I did it usually about three to five files a day. Just plugging along. I didn't have to move anything. I didn't have to do anything. I just would take five files out of my file cabinet. Um, I had numbered things and I just started typing in whatever I needed to type in. And so it took, I don't know, maybe a month to get in all my files, but I was only doing two or three or four or five a day. Five minutes tops. Um, and I sure got rid of a lot of stuff because I thought, oh, for heaven's sakes, why do you even have this? So it's not, it is not time consuming. The question about whether it works on an iPad, um, if you've got the uh, cloud-based version, yeah. Um, it you would just access access the web and I, I hope I'm answering that correctly I'm getting ready to get an iPad and my my sense is that I'll be able to um, be able to use that it shouldn't shouldn't be any problem because you can get into the cloud from your iPad and now you can also and I know I'm not demonstrating it we're pretty much out of time but the the version that's the desktop version, which is what I used up until about a year ago when they came out with the one that's a web-based, um, it works exactly the same. Oh, okay, so the question is, yeah, it, does it use Flash? I don't think it uses Flash. And Janet, I don't know if you got on the line today, but if you want to type in whether this uses Flash, that would be great. Um, all right, a uh, question about the free version. The free version works exactly like what I'm showing you. It's the only way that you're limited is you're limited to one location. And so where I have um, reference, action, projects, baskets, those are different locations. The free version, let's say you wanted to just set up reference, and you could do that and it works exactly like what I'm showing you. And I really, really, um, I encourage you, and I would appreciate it if you went through my links, um, because I do get credit for that, and you know that helps me pay for all my millions of other projects, and <laughs> being able to offer these kinds of things free, you know, pay for the webinar service and all that business. So if, you would, if you'd go through my link, I really do appreciate it. Um, obviously, I don't get any money if you sign up for the free version, I don't care. Sign up. Sign up for the free version. Um, the full version is. It depends on which one you are. You're wanting to go with, and there are you know several different, uh, several different possibilities. Um, and so, if you bought the if you bought the hard drive version, then I think it's like one hundred and thirty dollars right now, one time fee, and the. Uh, the online version, I think the one that I use is $9 a month or something like that. It's very inexpensive. It's very inexpensive. But I'd encourage all of you to start with the free version, see how you like it, and then you can just, you can just upgrade on that. All right. Um, okay, good. So Janet, thank you. Um, Janet is the very wonderful uh, person who works at Paper Tiger, and she said, you can, there's a particular blog post that tells you how to get um, various icons on your different devices. And I will, I will send that out because I'm not going to just read that out to you guys. I'll send that out um, when I send out the recording tonight. 
couple more things, and then I, I do want us to close out. I want us to stay on time. And this is just to show you, I do have uh, what's, what's called archive for me, and that is my file cabinet in the garage. And I almost hurt myself taking these pictures because it's in the garage, and we've got both of our cars in the garage, so whenever I actually do need to be digging around in these files, my husband has to move his truck out. But these are the these are previous years um, receipts and all kinds of things like that. Um, like I said, I keep things for seven years, and then it, it always makes me so happy to at the first day of the year to figure out, okay, which year is now the eighth year? I go back, I grab all those files out, take them out of Paper Tiger, and take them to the shredding place. Not on the first, but I, I get rid of them. So you can see here, these are the items that are just in my archive. Uh, baskets, the stuff I store in baskets. I've got sewing stuff um, in my number eight <laughs> Heartland cake basket, which I tell you is on the lower shelf in Larry's office. There's an otter in there. Not a real otter, but a stuffed otter, because you never know when you might need one. Um, there's also mouse pads, mice, extra cell phone chargers. It's just, it's crap. And it would be crap if it was all over the place, but it's in this beautiful basket. And so it's all nice and contained. And so anyway, this, um, I just was going to show you. What a nice desk I have, and I, I want to go ahead and just close out at this point because we are at the end of our time. I do hope that, you know, go back to Megan.com forward slash paper tiger with the P and the T both capitalized dot PHP. It's the place you signed up. You'll see over there on the right where it says, I always tell them, use paper tiger. Click on that. You're going to be able to go to the website. You can sign up for a free version. You can sign up for one of the other versions. It's fabulous, folks. Um, people have been asking me to do this webinar for so long, and that's how we ended up with over 500 people signed up. I thought, oh my gosh, I should have done this a little bit sooner. And I appreciate all of the, the questions that you sent ahead of time. Um, the ones that I was not able to get to and the ones that you that you typed in that I wasn't able to get to, I'll try to to keep answering those and maybe put up some blog posts or something like that. But I hope, I hope that you got what you needed today as far as seeing how this works. Um, comments are coming in. This is great. I'm excited to get started. Um, wish I'd known about this years ago, somebody else said, and it's absolutely the truth. Somebody saying, this is fantastic. I can see me using this system more at home than in my office. I'm telling you, give it a try. Uh, which is why it's beautiful that you can get the, the free version. Um, if you have other questions, go ahead and um, either type those in. Once I do close out the webinar, then I won't be able to take any more questions there. I'm headed out to meetings the rest of today. I will get you the recording tonight, and that way you can view it, you can show other people, and sometimes you've got to convince other people in your offices that they need to go with this. And then somebody's saying, yes, this beats the geological filing system of layers. And some of you are here looking at this for your um, colleagues. And I encourage you, and you're welcome because this was a free webinar, you're welcome to share it with them um, as well. So thank you. Um, and, and I do believe, yes, the question came in, if you sign up for the free version, will I, will I get credit? Um, if you upgrade, and my understanding is yes, I think it tracks all that kind of thing. But the main thing is, do use my link. Um, that way Paper Tiger does know that people are coming to them, whether you sign up for the free or not. I believe once you use it, um, you'll, want, you'll want more than this. Awesome. Thank you so much um, to everybody for being here, and watch for the recording sometime tonight, um, or no later than tomorrow, just depending on how, how quickly I can get it done this evening. Thanks, everybody. Bye.